entrepreneurship is 24 7. if you want to work and then go chill and then like not think about work like this is not for you because there will be there will always be somebody that is willing to work 24 7 that that will beat you you're listening to deal closers brought to you by websitecloasers.com a show about how to build your e-commerce business to be profitable scalable and one day even sellable i'm jason gillikin and on the show today Website closers Ron Matheson, Isaac Porter, Jason Garitas, and I talked to a founder who grew up in a tiny country, a tenth the size of California, moved to the U.S. at 18 to go to college, which didn't quite work out, started his online business, sold it, and he's still just 22 years old. You know, when someone moves to a different country, it's a pretty risky proposition. Many times they're leaving their families behind, their language behind, and they have to completely change their way of life. It's no wonder that immigrants tend to take risks in business too. In the United States, immigrant entrepreneurs make up 22% of all business owners, despite being just 14% of the population. For Valin Abrahamian, he's one of those risk takers. He grew up in Armenia and decided when he was 18 that it was time to move to the United States for college. And although English wasn't his first language, he figured it out. Uh, I started watching YouTube videos since I was like 11. Just the topics that I was interested in. I literally started from like knowing zero words at all. And all I did was just start the captions on all, all videos. And I would just stop the video and translate the, the sentences with Google Translate. And that's how I got to learn English. Cause uh, you know, going through the academic way of learning English, if you talk that way to, to, to people, it's like, it, it sounds weird. You know, it's not the same way as just like communicating to, with a regular person. YouTube University is something that Valen would become very familiar with because when he got to the U.S. with plans on enrolling in San Jose State University, they told him he had to wait another year. So he enrolled in community college, but he felt like he was learning more on YouTube than in his classes, and he wasn't quite sure what to do about it. I was, I was sitting there, I'm like, well, might as well just, you know, start working. But then I thought, like, I don't have a college degree. I don't, I don't have a degree at all. So probably the, I'm not going to get any job that I want, right? I'm just going to get a minimum wage. So, uh, and that's what I did. So I, I was a, I was a uh, lifeguard for three months because I have a swim background in, in, in Armenia. And uh, meanwhile that, that I was doing that, I was like, maybe I should start my own thing. Like I'll, I'll try this online thing. And it all started with like scammy websites of like how to make money online and all those like stupid videos. But it's just like, that's how I just stumbled upon like uh, the whole online world of, of, uh, of business. Okay, so did you fall for any of the scammy, you know, here's no. how to make six figures tomorrow? <laughs> I watched all those videos. I, I, I learned a bit, but uh, I didn't I didn't buy any courses or like I didn't I didn't waste that much. <laughs> yeah. No. So how long did you stay in school uh, at the community college? Yeah, so I stayed there for a year and a half and uh, I pretty much started the oh, oh, like learning about online business uh, maybe a couple months after i started college so it was right like i moved to the us within like five months i'm trying to learn something how to make money online so over a year and a half period i tested out a bunch of i tried to sell uh, i tried to design uh, uh how do you like booklets. I tried to uh, do direct affiliate marketing. I tried to do email marketing. I tried to do an online uh, fitness training coaching business. I tried to do ch chatbots, automation. So for a year and a half, I pretty much tried everything that I could get my hands on, like even even e-commerce and um, anything and everything that I could do and just like failed on everything. But I mean, throughout, I, I also had a goal of just reading a book every two weeks, like a specific business book. So for after like a year and a half, I already had like 30 books under my belt and I already had like so many failures and kind of every three months or so I would just go back and like uh, look what I did. And I was like, OK, so I did this. This didn't work. How, how, what can I learn from here? Like, right. So after that, it was um, May of 2019 and it was right at the end of the quarter. And, and I. Uh, started uh, getfera.com was like let me give this e-commerce e-commerce uh, one more shot and i launched the website i launched the ads and within two hours i got my first sale and for the whole year and a half my only goal was just to make one dollar profit online profitable 
And I remember I spent $10 on ads and I got a $20 sale and $6 was the cost of goods. And I was like, if I shut down everything right now, I've made $4 in profit. So I've, I've reached my goal in the last year and a half. I have made $4 in profit. And I was just ecstatic. So I was thinking, right, if I can make this work, because I wasn't going to take any summer classes, if I can get to 10K a month till September, I'm not going back. So that's pretty much how it happened. So I didn't officially like drop out and get been cold and I'm like, I'm not coming back. Like, you know, screw you. It's just I stopped going to classes after a quarter and like I never, never went back. And they're still trying to call you. And uh, oh, actually, what they're they're going to be calling you for uh, alumni donations now. They, 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 they call me. They're like, oh, <laughs> they asked me, like, uh, so do you work? I'm like, yeah. So how much is it that related to your uh, studies in the end? I'm like, zero <laughs> 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 percent. Yeah, they, they, they gave the call. Man, so I, I have a question. I have a question about. Uh, hi, hi, villain. Uh, thanks for, for being on here. I have a question about, you know, what it was like when you first got over here. Uh, I, I don't know if you come from money or if you had a lot of money, but I, I would assume that um, things were a bit stressful, no? I mean, as you're as you're trying all these things out and time is passing and it sounds like you were doing lifeguarding and so forth. But I would assume that there was a little bit of stress. Not really. I'm so grateful about that. So I, I don't come I don't come from a, a, a money family. I mean, there was a time where four of us in Armenia we lived on two dollars a day and uh i'm wow. so grateful for my i mean I've, I've watched my dad like work throughout his whole life and 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 uh i mean he's a top one percent earner he works at a software company so just watching that like the whole spectrum of of living on on, on loans and then to getting to a place where it's like you drive a nice car you like you don't have to worry about food and stuff so when we when we got here like i have no bills i have pretty much nothing on me so even if it i was thinking just like even if it takes me a year five years ten years like what do i have to lose even if it means like i save all this money from from a regular job and i waste it on business like i i have nothing to lose you know i'm, I'm never going to be in a position where my like my dad was where like i have to worry about uh you know today's food so i'm, I'm super grateful about that and uh, it kind of give me the uh he also kind of didn't force me to to he was like just do your thing you know so i just had the the uh, the uh, ability to explore the this new country and all the opportunity that it, opportunities there that it gives you uh, and uh, yeah so i assume you would recommend what you've done uh to others in armenia right of course, <laughs> Why not? Of course. this is a world of i mean america is, a, is an amazing opportunity yeah so my friends uh like one of my friends uh i was with him a few days ago i just come came back from a trip and he's like so how do i get there i'm like look just he's a software engineer i'm like just get extremely good at what you do and then apply it to h1 visa uh, h1b visas uh to all the software companies here and just get here right because like this there's so many things to do. If, I mean, if I go back to Armenia, let's say I have to start from zero, I can obviously do everything from zero in there as well. But just the, just the environment, just the like seeing everything around you, seeing the structure, like it, it, it's it's a lot different there. So it it, it clears up your mind and it gives you the the, the vision to, to see like what is out there. Very cool. It's a great story. It is. Vilen, talk, go back to your failures, not failures, learnings about e-commerce and affiliates and, and all that. What what were the some of the lessons there uh, of like why this wasn't working and, and how did you apply that to, to get Fiora? So major thing, uh, one of the biggest things was that I was just treating it as a as a side hustle and like make money online and just push two buttons and make like a hundred dollars a day in income like i personally don't believe that's that that happens right so it's like oh make hundred dollars with e-com like if you have the business that makes hundred dollars you can make a thousand dollars a day you can make ten thousand dollars a day so it's, it's a business right it's not a make money online side hustle it's a business so everything changed when i started to treat it like a business so and, and another big thing was I was sold on all of this automations and like 
funnels and kind of optimizations and order bumps and like all of that stuff when in reality it's like do you know how to sell a product you know do you know like you got to take a product that people want you gotta you know you gotta sell it so it doesn't make a difference whether the advertisement is on on a newspaper on a tv or on facebook it's the same advertisement so it's like so all of the fundamental things change it's kind of the biggest list uh, learning was that uh, there's a lot, 99% of the information out there is like a, a noise and you can just disregard those and just focus on the basic fundamentals. And uh, that's how I kind of, that's, that's when I, that's when it clicked for me, you know. Basic fundamentals, like how do you know what that 1% is? So like there's 99% noise. How do you know what's the 1% like here are the core fundamentals? Uh look for people look for mentors and uh the people who are who are uh sharing good information instead of flashing a lifestyle you know what i mean so yeah. there are a lot of people on online that that just shared the lifestyle and they sell you the dream and they're like oh you can do two hours of work for two weeks and then you have a lambo right so that that doesn't happen so and then also read the books uh, the fundamental uh, good good books like uh, don't I mean, don't read novels. I mean, not don't read them. It's like do whatever you want. But if you wanna if you if you wanna read books that help you in business, just read specific business books. Like, for example, um, the Personal MBA. That's one of my favorite favorite books. That's that's super helpful. Just like reading that book alone will will get you like fifty percent into business mind it's like oh, oh so i have to do all of this stuff to to actually start making money i i actually have to know about taxes i actually have to know about accounting i actually have to know about marketing and sales and like you know so n instead of just go to this scammy website and click this two buttons and, and share your social security number and get your lamborghini yeah <laughs> <laughs> so v you, you didn't do a mastermind or anything like that it's just all trial and error uh, so for about a year, it was all try and trial and error, but then also I would just, let's say it was, a, if it was a course, uh, I remember it was a course from Alex Becker, uh, and he, he, he was, he offered $1 for 30 day trial and the whole course was for six months. So what I did is I bought, I paid $1 and within <laughs> one month, I watched the, the full thing, the six month course, and then I just canceled it. Cause I couldn't afford the, the to pay the continuity pro program. And then when I was at the lifeguard job and I, and I had sa saved up with a, a bit of money, I bought this, uh, it was a consulting accelerator course by Sam Ovens. Uh, best, one of the best $1,500 that I've spent. Uh, so that's another course that I bought and, uh, and, uh, yeah. And then when I started e-com, I, uh, I got, uh, one more course for, for e-com. Uh, but, but that one was, uh, I already knew kind of the fundamentals. So, but yeah, pretty, pretty much uh, a majority of trial, trial and error, the, uh, and books and then a couple of courses. So Vilan, um, you said, uh, you had that first order with Giffiora for $20 and you made four bucks on it. And, and you had a goal of getting to ten thousand dollars a month. Um, I guess take us back. Like, what is what exactly is Fiora and GetFiora.com? Um, is it is it a affiliate site? Is it a dropshipping site? Like, what is that? Yes. So uh, GetFiora.com was a. Um, it started as being just a dropshipping website uh, for a full coverage uh, makeup foundation, and when I started, there were probably 50 different sellers on Facebook selling the same product, right? And then like fast forward three years later, we were the biggest uh, seller in the entire world and had licensing agreement with the manufacturer, just pretty much hundreds of thousands of customers and, 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 and returning customers. But uh, yeah, it just started as a simple uh, dropshipping website. And the idea was for the first year and a half, the goal was just to make $1 in profit because I knew that if I can make $1 in profit, I can make a lot more. 
and I knew that if I can, uh, once I get it going, like uh, it's not um, unreasonable to uh, get to 10K per month within a few months. So it kind of worked out. And I actually made 16K uh, uh, profit first month, that it, like first full month. What? <laughs> yeah. Because I already knew, I already knew from the year and a half before of all the failures and like, uh, I already knew how to do Facebook ads. I already knew how to uh, get an LLC going. Then I have to get an LLC, get a get an S corp. You know, I already knew the uh, how to do accounting. I already knew like what cost of goods, gross margin, and all that stuff. So I just kind of I I, I just did not have a place to implement the the knowledge that I learned before. And once I had it, once I had the first sale, I was like, okay, this is it. I think I think I can make this work. That is incredible. So 16K profit in your first month. Are we yeah. talking like 100K then in, in revenue? No, it was a uh, it was like 60K in revenue and 16 in profit. So first two weeks, uh, the very first two. So first sale I got on May 14th uh, till May 31st, I believe it's a 30, 31 day month. I had 2000 in sales and $50 profit. And then the month of June, I had about 60,000 in sales and 16K in profit. And then July was 100,000 in sales and 32K profit. And uh, yeah. I mean, what's going through your mind at this point? Because you're going from zero and, and just hoping to make a dollar to making, you said, 32 grand in your second I month. I was like, terrified. <laughs> terrified? <laughs> I was terrified of losing it so i i spent zero dollars i mean i didn't have even even time to spend any money but i was just working all day day and night i was handling all the comments all the uh, emails all the order fulfillment i was fulfilling them manually like I, so i was just doing everything since the moment i opened my eyes to the moment that i closed my eyes just like straight up work seven days a week and i kind of knew what i what to expect Cause I had this idea in my mind. I was like, if I can, uh, even the year and a half before that, I was just working very hard. I was like, I, eventually it's going to happen. So when it did, I wasn't shocked. I wasn't, you know, I mean, I was very happy. I was ecstatic, but it wasn't like, Oh, this is a dream that I'm going to wake up from. It's like, Oh, okay. So this is where, this is where I get to reap all the benefits of, of my uh, previous work, the Rocky cut scene, I like to call it. <laughs> and also the hard work, the seven yeah, days a week. Yeah. That's what it yeah. takes as an entrepreneur full time. Definitely. It's 24 seven. It's uh, sure is. It's 24 seven. And I, I learned that from Henry Ford, the, his autobiography. It's such a good book. It's like entrepreneurship is 24 seven. If you want to if you want to work and then go chill and then like not think about work, like this is not for you. That's right. Because there'll be there'll always be somebody that is willing to work 24-7 that that will beat you. Man, I want to have that that quote from Henry Ford uh on my wall. Uh if you wanna if you want to work and then go chill, uh quoted by <laughs> Henry Ford. I'm paraphrasing. I'll I know, I know, I know. I'm just messing <laughs> with you. Just slightly, <laughs> slightly paraphrasing. I know, I'm messing with you. Yeah. Um so Vilan, when was there any sort of mental relief about like uh, losing that fear of, of, of losing it all? Um, when I exited the company. Okay. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Well, well, we'll get to that. Um, did you experience growth in terms of team members? What, was there anybody that could take some, some things off your plate? Yeah. So after, uh, after a month of all of fulfilling orders, pretty much from AliExpress, like manually, I got uh, in touch with uh, with an agent, uh, and I was lucky enough to get recommended this agent, so I didn't have to go through all the screening process. And so that was pretty much the first team member who started taking over the fulfillment. And then uh, after doing two months of customer support, I I, I got a customer support representative, and uh, that was pretty much the team for whole year, the first year. Those those two people. Yeah. And, and then I would do everything else myself, mainly because I wanted to do it to learn. Like I wanted to do the two months of uh, customer support so that when I get it, got a person, I already had the templates of, oh, this is the email. This is the question. This is the response. 
these are the oldest scenarios like if if, if it's outside of this ask me we're going to handle and we're going to add it to the to the uh, faq list and then like i did the i did the whole accounting first year of accounting myself uh like i prepared the numbers for tax filing like i did the like lc s uh, turning that into s score you know so i i did all of that myself like facebook ads creating videos video editing uh, shooting the content so all of that i did it myself just to learn and then uh beginning of 2020 is when i started to get more team members yeah and it seems like with those sops in place you are very well set up um, for a potential exit because you already had those things done it's so easy as a as a founder to just go not go through the motions but do what's right in front of you and not truly go uh, after those sops um, but it sounds like you had that that great foundation yeah it was it was definitely important because when you have when you have a kind of a process it's it's two ways you don't have to be extremely uh kind of rigid in those processes because the business is growing and you have to give yourself the flexibility of changing and anytime you're doing something you probably can do it better so i didn't have it like oh this is the way and this is 100 is going to be the way for for like forever but i still had the kind of the uh this is the goal of this process this is like this is the problem and this is what we're trying to achieve and in between this is how we do it but it can also be changed but it also helps you like when you get a team member let's say uh let's say your customer support rep uh leaves you and like suddenly they're like oh i'll, I'll be gone tomorrow but then you can easily hire another person and give them the sop to start working the following day so it's uh it's important so and you you mentioned something I want to go back to. Um, you said you, you were talking about problem solving. One of one of the things that stood out to me when when I think the first time or the second time that we talked is you said that you've encountered every problem there is and figured out how to overcome it. Um, and and that was pretty much your attitude, you know, through the whole the whole startup process and through the whole transaction. Can you tell us about some of the problems, you know? even before you went to market, but some of the problems that you've encountered in the business and how you resolve them. Definitely. Uh, so problem number one, the orders weren't being fulfilled as fast as I wanted. Solution, scream at the supplier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that was the, uh, that was one of the, one of the first ones, like I had to figure out the com way to communicate with the supplier and way to manage the, the inventory. Uh, and make sure that the orders are being fulfilled every day. And it mostly required me to staying on top of things when I did not want to do that. Uh, another problem that I uh, uh, hit, uh, I got my ad account shut down uh, pretty much uh, after two months. Uh, so in August of 2019, and uh, it got shut down because the bank rejected the payment from Facebook and then uh, the ad account went down and then I applied Then the same thing happened twice. And then there was a bug on Facebook that shut down the account three times. So I couldn't appeal it. So I texted the Facebook rep support. They're like, oh, just open another ad account and then start advertising. Newsflash, you can't do that circumventing their uh, policies. So I got my business manager shut down. And I just knew that if I try to do the same thing, I'll get my personal account shut down, which would just wipe me out. So I would just wait for a week, try to figure out how to do it, uh, and then found a solution uh, to that, got back, got back to work, and uh, that figured that whole thing out. Uh, then for a few months, the, the another problem was uh, the ads, like solving the ads and like inconsistency and how to grow, right? So I learned all I could about that, fixed that. Beginning of 2020, COVID hit huge supply issues uh, like i learned how to manage customers uh, during that period like manage thousands of angry customers how to create systems like spreadsheets of managing problem orders and how to handle individually and kind of uh create a hierarchy of solutions it's like oh if this customer like we we offer them we just say sorry and then we maybe offer them a discount for next order. If they don't want, maybe we offer them a free product with their shipping, or maybe we offer them a partial refund, and then we go to the refund, right? So like a hierarchy of solutions. Uh, that was a big, a big issue. 
another issue that I encountered was I used a um, clip uh, from, uh, so a, an influencer bought the product from, from uh, uh, our website and uh, she made a uh, review video on it. And then I used a clip from this v review video and then I got DMCA claimed and the whole website went down. The whole Facebook ad account went down. So that was a major, major issue. It took me so long to just grinding my teeth out to find a solution with that uh, individual because she was so mad at me. I don't know why, but I guess that happens. Uh, so that uh, during that time i again went back to like my facebook solution of how to start a backup to keep it separated you know that that you can get going but yeah i mean covid was one of the biggest ones and yeah i mean ongoing problems of like uh let's say you hire somebody and that the hire doesn't work or they screw it up or like something is not working orders are not being fulfilled like ads are not our ads are going back bad you cannot find good team members like uh, something is off with accounting so just like ongoing issues of of, of uh, fixing and i do have the mentality of like i don't care what it is i'll figure it out so like vast majority of the time like uh it's like oh what you're gonna do i'm like i don't know but i'll figure it out like i'll do something v -Len, what was your inspiration to choose your product lines um you know where did it all come from yeah, so I had uh, this uh, list of uh, kind of, uh, let me open the list of, of uh, criteria that I wanted for my winner product. So it had to solve a problem. It had to have a large market. It had to be hard to find in stores. It had to be unique and impressive. It had to have some competition. You had to have a track record of selling. It had to be evergreen, which means I could sell it for a very long time. You had to have uh, healthy margins, uh, gross profit margins. Uh, and it had to be um, perceived as have high value. So if you go through, uh, like if you attach the makeup foundation to that uh, this, the, that criteria, uh, it matched, matched everything. So it was like 10 out of 10. I'm like, I, I have no idea. I don't know anything about cosmetics and I still don't. <laughs> and uh, I was like, but this looks like, if I have a criteria that I'm going to follow, then I'm going to follow. I'm not going to have any emotional attachment to the product. So let me give this product a shot. So, and, and it was my very first product that I tried and, and I'm happy that I went for it. How did you source it? Uh, from AliExpress. Just went to AliExpress, searched the brand name, found the, the, the one that it wasn't the cheapest one, but it had the most amount of reviews. So I was like, I was not dumb enough to go with the cheapest one and have issues with the supply chain. So I would just pay a bit more, but uh, get it delivered. And where did the name come from? And the, you know, how did you brand? And Yeah. So because the product uh, had already the brand name on it uh, and I, I, I went up online and I saw all these comp uh, competitors, they were selling from like scammy shops. It was like, uh, like, trendy products xyz.com or like some things like that i was like what if i can uh position myself as as a as a, a seller of the brand uh like a major seller of the brand without looking scammy right so i would just call the website initially it was tryflora.com but after my first account shut down from facebook it turned into getflora.com and uh, I was like, yeah, that's that's pretty much how it went. So the, the, the product name already was on it. I just positioned myself in a better way than the, than the marketplace. I think one of the other things that impressed me as we went through the process, Villain, was that I think in every every month that we worked together and got financial updates, your number of recurring customers, repeat customers increased. So, you know, people loved this product. And I think to your credit, you worked through some of those challenges you had in fulfillment and customer service, and you kept really good reviews on, on Facebook. And, uh, and because of that, people came back to buy again. So, um, how, how big did it, did it get for you, uh, in terms of kind of the, the total volume of business you were doing and how many total customers did you have and what was kind of, you know, when you sold, how, what was the re recurring customer? Yeah, when, when we sold, uh, 
in total we had 450,000 customers and on a monthly basis we were getting 30% returning customer rate yeah so we had over 50,000 returning customers and uh yeah so two plus times of of, of repeat purchases yeah that that's so valuable yeah, yeah it, it's uh, i believe it's the the most amount of uh, that's the biggest value component of the business uh and then the the key to that was that even if it's shipped from china it had like seven day shipping time so it, i bought a sneakers from under armor and they're a billion dollar u.s company and i got them in two weeks I'm like <laughs> so yeah. it's not like it's a two month shipping time it's not like it, the packaging is crap and like the product is bad everything is is extremely good and it's just the drop shipping model people this is this is what i mean by treating it as a business drop shipping just means that you don't hold inventory in the beginning right you don't hold inventory but that's it everything else is like applies to if you're a big brand or a drop shipper like everything is the same right yeah but that's how how kind of how i treated the 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 brand and and uh, it paid dividends so besides the shipping time though how did how did your customers stay loyal to you like did you put them in some sort of email sequence um like how, how did they stay loyal yeah we had a uh, so we had a whole process of uh, e email marketing, SMS marketing, retargeting uh, with ads, uh, making new offers, uh, bundles. Uh, so diff different offer uh, offers like uh, discounts with different uh, uh, like events and celebrations and, and holidays. So that, that has been a tremendous amount of help. And plus just going through the, process of uh, purchasing from the website let's say the customer doesn't know their uh, shade right and they and, and they send us a message they're like oh I don't know which shade to get and we help them out to pick a shade and uh, they're like oh this this has been super helpful uh, I love you so I'm gonna order again or if the shade did not work for them let's say they're like oh this is a bit light we would just send them another shade for absolutely for free they're like oh this is this is amazing. So I get two products, like I get it for free. I thought I was going to pay for it. So I'm just going to come back and buy and I'm going to refer two of my friends to come back and buy. So that's kind of how it, how it grew. It, it's like treat your customers as customers, not just numbers on Facebook dashboard. Here, here. That's great advice. v when it came to transition, was it kind of on the fly or did you have it all systematically laid out or how did that work? I, I, I knew uh, how transition would have happened from the beginning of, of working with, with Isaac. Because, I mean, you can't, if you're going to sell your business, obviously there's going to be a transition period, right? So it's like, might as well get prepared for it. Because <laughs> also the buyer will be curious of how you're going to do it. So I had by that time, so I had a, a team members of a team of 11 people. Everything was uh, being done automatically. Uh, I, I was just working maybe an hour or two hours a day. And I had all the places that um, like pretty much had all the systems, processes, team members, everything laid out. And I knew like, oh, the first week, this is going to be the transition for the first week. This is going to be the training for the first week. This is going to be the training for this second, third transition. So I, I had I had it laid out, but I guess it's it's uh, it's uh, specific for every business and specific to uh, where you are at at the business journey. So why not just keep this train rolling then? Like why sell the company if you're working one two hours a day and it's make and you're profiting you know tens of thousands of dollars a, a month. Yeah, it's, it's just I wasn't passionate about it. Like mm -hmm. I told you, I didn't know anything about cosmetics. And I, I thought to myself, well, I can go two routes. I can double down on this business and, and grow it. And the growth opportunities were there 100%. Like I could do so many things with the brand. But it's like 
if I have to go through all this pain and, and kind of struggle to, to uh, grow it, why not and like work on it? Why not just do something that I enjoy? So it was like kind of a win-win situation. It's like, I can exit the business. I can, I can uh, get capital for my future endeavors. I can transition the business to somebody who can grow it. And, and there's a lot of meat on the bone to keep growing the business. And it's kind of like a win-win situation. So that's what I decided. It's like, okay, let's, let's do this. But even throughout the process, as I can tell you, it's like, if we sell it, we sell it. If we don't, it's like, it's okay. I can, you know, I don't mind keeping it. <laughs> yeah. I have a question on that. So when you started the process process with Isaac, did you have in mind who you thought the perfect buyer would be? And if so, did that match who ended up buying the company? That one I didn't. I actually didn't because the, the whole thing is was so new to me. I had no idea. Like, I didn't know if it was going to be somebody like me who bought the company, who was going to just have a small team running the company. Is it going to be like a billion dollar brand just buying the company to get the like, all close to half a million customers? Is it going to be like a uh, conglomerate of, of uh, like a different brand, uh, a firm that has different type of brands? And like, so I didn't know, I didn't know what to expect. So, so who did you connect with then? Like, did, did you talk to a, a few different companies that were, um, you know, smaller companies and then some larger ones? Uh, so, I got uh, a good friend of mine, Alex, Alex Edetov. Uh, he introduced me to uh, Isaac, Isaac and Brent. And uh, I, I, I asked you guys, uh, so what's needed from, what is needed from me? And they were very upfront, very honest. It's like, we're going to have to obviously get the information from for the company financials, et cetera, make the package and, and launch it. And then from there on, we'll handle all the, all the, uh, paperwork and the uh, NDAs and the like uh, screening, buyer screening, calls, etc. So kind of, it's more of a Isaac question <laughs> who we talked to. Uh, uh, but yeah, we've, we've had uh, a lot of um, activity. Uh, yeah, we, we had, um, I think, well over 200 NDA responses for, for this company. We probably conducted 20, 20 or more buyer calls. We had multiple offers on the business uh, and, um, you know, ultimately found a buyer that had the right, the right capital structure when we closed. And I don't know if you can share any of the kind of not, not the dollar amounts, but just the, the type of structure that you got and how the deal worked out. Yeah. So it was a hundred percent cash purchase with a two month transition. Uh, and that's what I wanted. I honestly, if I want, I could have went with a different structure with, uh, let's say, seller notes uh, and let, let's say a, an earn out. Uh, I would have uh, got more money from it. But uh, I have a mm, kind of tendency to, if I do something, like I like to start from a clean plate. I don't like to intermingle project, etc. So I was like, if, I, if I'm exiting the business, might as well just exit it completely. You know what I mean? So, it, and it's, and it's been like that to, to, let's say when I buy a car, I don't, I pay it cash. I don't like to get the loan. So I don't have to worry about monthly payments because that's a to-do list that intermingles with everything else. So it's like, you haven't like, been in America oh, long enough. Yeah. You, you got to learn a little more tax. time in America. You got to learn those start taking out Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean. I'm, I was thinking I'm, the same I'm thing. so many things stupidly. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. I mean, I'm doing so many, like. Yeah, it's kind of my personal thing. So I, I, I wanted that that cash purchase structure, and I'm uh, I'm very happy that I that I got it. And uh, yeah, Vlen, you visualized all these different kinds of buyers. Uh, Isaac brought you, you know, a large amount of buyers. Who in the end? What kind of buyer was it? Yeah, so uh, he's a. a He's an individual owner on an older side, and he has a, a tremendous amount of experience in business in general. So the 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 kind of what he was looking for when he purchased the business was just a cash flow machine. It's like I buy the business and I leave it, and it pumps out cash flow, 
and uh, I'm, I'm happy to say that that that's what he got. So after during the transition period, I uh, uh, I even hired another person to take over my my responsibility in the company and kind of train them as well. So at the moment, I believe um, I believe like the new owner uh, is doing the minimal amount of work, like maybe ten minutes a day, and and is still making a very good amount. And uh, I, I guess it it all it all it all matched. So after the sale of your company, I, I don't picture you hanging on the beach, you know, like the days of being a lifeguard. What What is going on now? What's next? Yeah. So right now I'm in the resting phase. <laughs> so I had a trip to Vegas. I had a trip to Florida. I just got back from Dubai yesterday with uh, a lot of my friends. And then I'm leaving to Maldives in two days. So I, but I planned this like a very long time ago. So I planned a one month rest. And then when I come back on May 12th, that's kind of when I'm going to get back to work, start something new. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I cannot imagine myself now working. I'm, I'm like, what else am I going to do? I'll just go crazy. <laughs> like, you know, so I, I'm so excited. I, I get I get the itch of going back to work like probably two days after we, after we exited the company. So I've been I I've had that itch for like two months now, and it, like I'm gonna see. Uh, so I'm going to Maldives with my girlfriend, and and I'm telling her like, well, I cannot wait to come back and and get to work. And she's like, can't you just enjoy for just two weeks? Like <laughs> we, you're gonna get a bit of rest. Like you don't even worry about. I'm like, no, I I can't I can't. It's just me. Like I have to go back to work. So I'm I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. You're afflicted by that disease called entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I, I guess so. It's it's you know because I've seen like I've I've seen the whole spectrum. I've seen what it like what it's like to not being able to leave your country, like the visa issues, passport issues. You can't do anything. You can't travel. You can't see uh, friends and family. You can't. You go to a store. You can't buy anything. You can't uh, like a. Like even growing up, like I want this toy, like I cannot get it. You, you know, I want this food, I cannot get it. So I've seen all of that, and uh, and I'm, I'm 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 very fortunate that I'm not in that situation anymore. But like thinking about it, the freedom and and kind of uh, all of the stuff that I have, all came through work. So am I just gonna leave it and like waste my time? Like I don't think so. So I'm just going to go back and double down on work and then see what happens in the next 10 years. How, how old are you now? I'm 22. 22 and you had Amazing. a big exit. What a great story. Love Amazing. it. Thank you. <laughs> so Bilen, with your next company, um, are you going to, are you going to, uh, I'll ask the question. Are you going to, uh, use website closers to help? Oh the next man, one? that's cheap. Yeah, of course. Put them on the spot. <laughs> of course. I was, I was, uh, I was motivating Isaac and Brent. I was telling them, "Hey, look, I know this is not the biggest close, like, but but the next one, the next one that I'm gonna bring you guys in a few years, that's gonna be huge. That's gonna be huge, and I still have that plan. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, definitely, of course. Awesome. Yeah. Then give us a teaser. What's the what's the next company gonna be? Like, what what are you, what are you narrowing it down to? I don't know. It's gonna have to do something with online, one hundred percent, and. Uh, I don't know about specifics, but I guess we'll figure it out when I'm on the next podcast. All right. That was Valen Abrahamian, and the website he started is getfiora.com. That's G-E-T-P-H-O-E-R-A.com. Thanks, everyone, for listening to this episode of the Deal Closers podcast brought to you by WebsiteClosers.com. If you like the show, be sure to rate us, write a review, press the follow button, or share with your network. And of course, if you're looking for help selling your e-commerce business, be sure to visit WebsiteClosers.com. This episode was edited and produced by EarFluence. I'm Jason Gillikin, and we'll see you next time on the Deal Closers Podcast.